I retired um, from my job um, in late 2004. And then in 2005, um, I got a surprise cancer diagnosis. And, you know, kind of dealt with that. And while I was going through that, it, it, it came out that this Bishop Street neighborhood, where my parents' house was, where we'd all grown up, um, was contaminated with industrial solvents. But in those days, these were in the days before Cambridge, even, right? So that you had these little communities. And um, our house was kind of on the outer limits of the Preston, I'll say, residential area. And then there was industry kind of cheek by jowl with us. And the best knowledge at the time was that these solvents could be dumped onto the ground. Yeah and that they would evaporate, but that's not what happened. Um, it was absorbed, and it's in the groundwater, and um, they had, I believe they call it vapor intrusion. So it was penetrating the basements of the homes in the area. And um, it's so hard to know the, I'll say the implications of all of that, but, um, you know, I think I think we all suspect. Certainly, it wasn't wasn't good <laughs> for people, not healthy for people. Um, but that was going on for decades. And again, I mean, you hesitate to point a finger because I think I think people were following best practices at the time. Um, so anyway, there were a series of community meetings starting in 2005. So around the same time that I joined the print group. And it just, I just had to kind of process all of that and think through what all that meant. And I think, um, I think for me, I think, I think bringing those things together, like I think uh, the, the picture from the birthday party and the innocence of children, you know, and how I think, I think a lot of the time we take for granted that we're protected, you know, by our parents. Um, by our politicians, right? By the institutions that are supposed to be, you know, they, they're supposed to have our best interests at heart. And sometimes they don't, you know, and sometimes things are not always what they seem. So um, the, the birthday party picture was kind of the, the starting point. And I'm, I'm always more interested, I'll say, in in people and animals and, and, and I'll say characters and, and less interested in, in backgrounds. But I knew that I had to have something compelling for these. And around the time that I was working on this, um, the city and the regional municipality were conducting an investigation of the area. And as an aside, you know, they've, they've, they've been great. They've been, um, I'll say, mitigating the effects and remediating the ground and so on. Um, I think it's hard to say. It's probably a little too late for those of us who, <laughs> who lived there when. But certainly, certainly people who move in there now are, are well protected and safeguarded. Uh, but so um, uh, they published a map of, of the investigation area. And um, our house is in there. And that is what, that's what's in the background. Of, um, of all three of those images. So uh, the first one on the left that is, I'll say black and, and pink or black and red, that one, I was going for kind of a, I, I call that one in the loop. So I was going for kind of the effect of, of, of a, a small magnifying lens looking at the neighborhood and the area. And um, the one in the middle is called Under the Spotlight. And that, you know, that one is my, is my favorite, I think, again, because I like the embossing, the blind embossing and the shinkalei with that. And then um, this, I went to Preston High School and there was a, a little saying that people had that helped them remember the names of the streets as they went from King Street down to the river where the high school was. And that's the little verse that I've reproduced on there. Um, so 
the king and queen of Hamilton wanted more vine for sharing with Rose the Regent, who lived down by the riverside. And that names all the, all the streets in the grid that go down there. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of the story, the story of those. So um, I'm looking for ways that I can, I can reuse plates and I'm, I'm building my plates in, I guess I would call it a modular fashion. Um, and these were all, these were all hand cut and hand glued. And I probably, <laughs> it's been so long, I will guarantee that I won't be lining these up properly. But I think, oh, maybe not, maybe it goes like this. You'll kind of get the idea, I hope. So, yeah. And those are based on that background is based on, whoops, based on um, this map, which they, they call the investigation area. And then, I mean, so basically for each, for each of the four characters in The Prince, I, you know, it was kind of fun. Essentially, um, I'm making little paper dolls and, uh, uh, you know, one plate carries the black ink, one plate carries, um, didn't actually use the ones that carry, I'll say, a solid red. Um, but for the plates where I wanted to have more of a, I'll say, a, a, are they Bende dots, you know, like in a comic book? Um, I just used, I'll say, textured scrapbooking paper that was embossed with little dots. And that gave me the, 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 the more subtle effect, you know? So there's, there's a, whoops, yeah, there's a, a, a plate for each. And then, um, yeah, and for this last one that's just the silhouettes, um, I just used a single plate to bear the black ink. But, um, and these, these ones sort of, sort of had to go together. I mean, I'm using the plates as masks in some cases to, to create space too, but, um, oh, now I've, <laughs> now I've run out of room, but um, yeah. Yeah, so it's just basically different combinations of plates. This is, this, uh, the image is here, it's a single plate for each for each girl, or maybe you know, maybe maybe a couple combined, and it's just bearing one one color of ink. Uh, and then the one in the middle with the chincolé uh, is a is a little more involved. Um, so you know, so the, the silhouette to achieve the I'll say the adhesion of of the chincolé onto the paper, um, and then a single plate bearing black ink over top. And then the one on, um, I guess, on the far left that has, has the, the pink or red is the most complex because I've got a, an additional plate in the mix, one of those ones that has the embossed dots on it to bear some of the, the red ink and give me a pink effect on that one. I would say for sure I envisioned two. And this one, I, this, this one here, I was just thinking about that rhyme and I just thought, huh, you know? I think, I think the other two are superior to this one, but, but it, it just seemed to fit and I sort of had to, I just seemed to have this one more thing I wanted to say about it, but. So um, this is actually a wallpaper, a textured wallpaper. And that gave me, again, sort of, I'll say the Bende dot 
effect with the with the gray. And then this this particular plate was the one that, that bore the black ink. And then um, I've used I've used different this was a textured material, not this print, but, but that I used to, to bear the ink for the color in the background. Um, and then that was inked up black. So with this particular one, it would be two passes through the press. So the first pass wouldn't have to be like this, but would look, whoops can't do it but like that mm -hmm. and then um, to make the registration easy you know so it goes through like that peel the paper off put the paper down on the press bed this is already inked up and then you just lay it down right. pretty easy to register mm -hmm. that way yeah so that that's Lucy this one <gasps> whoops I call uh, this one Kapow, <laughs> and it's based on um, it's based on a photograph. Um, they all are, you know, but it's based on a, a, a photograph of my cat Larry, and uh, he was bursting out of a Christmas tree one morning. <laughs> so, to make uh, this this Kapow, I would put so I've got a piece of plexi, and I would put yellow ink on there and then again as I say it's been a while since I've done this one but um, okay, I think not I, I would have inked that up with blue and I would have, have a, a paper registration grid to help me with this and the plexi is great for that but I you know would lay that down with the blue Whoops. And uh, ink this up with the black. Whoops, and again, doubtful that it'll actually line up. Oh, hey, not bad. <laughs> so, so that would be, I'll say, one pass through the press like that. And then I would uh, take the paper and flip it over. And um, then on the paper, I'd be, I'd be laying down a mask to protect um, this yellow area and the blue and the black. So I'd lay a mask down. It's this rubber, rubber material that you, we have something like that in our house to keep the rug from, from skidding and slipping. Um, so I glued it onto, I don't know if that's a piece of cardboard um, but it takes the red ink pretty well. I think just, well, I, I mean, I'm gonna say just sort of, just an awareness, I'll say, growing up uh, at the time that I did. So um, my siblings and I, we all collected comic books and Mad Magazine and, you know, all that stuff. And um, this is, <laughs> this is embarrassing, but, my first boyfriend in grade six. <laughs> that was the extent of our relationship. We traded comic books <laughs> together. So they've always, you know. And they, um, the language in a comic book is so, so bold. Um, and then uh, this one, I've, I've said to people that with that one, I've pushed, pushed the Colograph envelope as, about, as far as I intend to push it. I don't want to to do anything more complicated. Um, if you look closely at that one, you can see some of the same plates, actually, plates and plate materials in that one. So um, the starburst and um, the red grid, yeah. I think, that, so this particular one is called Flying Tiger. It's, it's the only thing that I've ever made where I actually had to have a printing assistant. And my friend uh, Kari helped me in the studio with that. Yeah, so that, like I say, that too is based on a photograph. Um, 
the, the basic elements, some of the more whimsical elements, like the airplane, not so much, but it's just, it's canvas. Hmm. It's canvas with an adhesive back, and the adhesive back gives it a stiffening. So it, it's just a fantastic plate material to use, but it gives you, um, I'll say the subtleties, I'll say the nuances in the cat's fur, and then some of the, uh, you know, the, the shadows and shading in the airplane as well. So yeah, it's, it's, it's been an amazing material to work with. I'm, I'm certainly not a colorist. That isn't, isn't my strong suit. You know, as a printmaker, I, I, like, I like monochrome quite well. But, but, you know, some of these just cried out for a bit of color. And it looks like, a, it looks like a, a screen print, but it's not, not a screen print. It might have been easier to do as a screen print. <laughs> I should probably look into that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just really like the challenge of it. Did printmaking choose me or did I choose printmaking? You know what I mean? Like, I think, I think, I think each of us tends to gravitate to an art form that really suits or is an extension of our personalities, you know? And I feel like that's been the case for me, for sure. Um, is Colograph my favorite? I think I, think I know it really well. I, I, know it, I know it so well that, um, you know, it's probably my go-to technique for, you know, again, it depends on the kind of image that I want to make. Um, but yeah, these days, and I'm, I'm doing a lot of Colograph for the show, too, but it's, yeah, like it's it's a bit like with the language, right? Like you can, you know, you can say what you want to say. Uh, I'll say succinctly. I suspect that I have some sensitivities because of, um, you know, uh, my history to it. But that's why I, I like Colograph so much, because, you know, I, I suppose nothing is ever a hundred percent innocuous. Like as we've seen, even baby powder. It's not, it's not really healthy for us, but um, you know, the inks themselves and using um, vegetable oil to clean up and just uh, you know, a, a simple acrylic-based adhesive kind of thing, it, it was about as safe as I could get. Um, so for a time, that's all I did, and that's why I switched to Colograph. But then um, I think there was, there was a, some kind of symposium at McMaster and um, a lady named Liz Chalfin came from um, Massachusetts and she was a guest speaker and she did some demonstrations and she talked about her print studio in um, Massachusetts called Zia Mays. And uh, I don't know, it sounded, it sounded pretty great. Mm -hmm. I, I really wanted to find out more about it because it was, you know, she was always careful to say, you know, this isn't really green. <laughs> Nothing is green, but this is less toxic. And she didn't want to call it non-toxic either, but she said, you know, less toxic and safer, you know, for you and for the environment. I think it was there for almost a month. And um, I did, they did a certificate program in, I think they, you know, environmentally friendly uh, etching. So yeah, I learned, I learned so much uh, from them. Uh, we got into photo etching, which um, took advantage of uh, polyester plate lithography, actually, was kind of the vehicle for um, applying the ink in a particular uh, pattern onto the plate. Um, so, you know, that I think for sure I will do more of. And even, even the polyester plate lithography is something I mean, Colograph is still my go-to, but sometimes you can't beat a lithograph, <laughs> you know, depending on what you're trying to do. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a fantastic experience. I mean, I would say, first of all, you have to take your creativity when you find it. And I think you have to know yourself too, like what time of day. You, for me, like 
Uh, I'm an early riser, so I've got a couple of hours before everybody else is up. And those are good times for me to think about ideas. Not make things, because that's more mechanical, but to sort of think about, to flesh out ideas, that's, that's when I like to do that. Nothing motivates me, and I've always been like this, fear of failure is a big one <laughs> for me. So um, nothing gets the let out like having a deadline, right? Um, and some people are just, are just like that. I mean, for some people, I'll say creativity, you know, sketching, journaling, it's just part of breathing for them, right? But, you know, for me, it always seems like there's something else that's of a higher priority than, than my own personal practice. So, so yeah, having, having a deadline helps. Um, in addition to the, um, to the print group, I belong to a critique group. And that's, that's been a new experience for me because I'm, I'm not, uh, I'll say I'm not academically trained. You know, like I've, I've been at it for 15 years and I've picked up what I know uh, from other artists and in the community kind of thing. Um, but that's a discipline that I, that, I think, that I think carried over from school days for some of these people and I've, I've found that really helpful too. Um, we try to show once a year but, but that isn't, you know, and again you've got this deadline and stick a bit, right, but, but just, you know, being able to talk to somebody about a problem that you're having and have them offer suggestions and, you know, you're not under any obligation to, to do what they say and, and sometimes you can help them too. So um, I think it's, it's been a pretty good dynamic.